relentless, harsh, inflexible, or unceasingly intense. Here's something interesting. If you type in relentless.com in your web browser, you'll be redirected to amazon.com. That's because Jeffrey Preston Bezos, the founder, CEO, and chairman of amazon.com, can be absolutely relentless. If you ask someone, what's the first thing that pops into your head when you hear Amazon.com? You might hear something along the lines of, they're the people with the drones, right? They're the people who made Kindle. Aren't those the guys who made that creepy speaker that listens to all your conversations? That's because they're famous for a lot of things. Amazon has maintained their success over the last 15 years just by being good. And they've done a lot of good things. Here are some of them. Firstly, they are extremely consumer-centric, and that means that the focus of attention is always on the consumer. So if you go back a few years, you'll find that a journalist at Business Insider wrote about how he tried to stream a movie from Amazon, and he had a few problems during the playback. So the next day, without him complaining or anything of the sort, Amazon sends him an email saying, we noticed that you had a few problems during playback, and we want to refund you your money. That's bloody brilliant. Secondly, they popularized free shipping and free returns, and that's present on most online retailers today. You know, whenever they say, spend 600 Rand or more and get free shipping, that's because of Amazon. So thank you to them for popularizing that culture. Thirdly, they have a culture of innovation, which means they're always trying new things. So think about it, right? They started off selling books, then they made tablets for you to read those books on, Then they started selling everything else like toys and groceries and clothes. And now they make a speaker that will buy those groceries for you. It's actually ingenious and it's a great example of scalability. But there needs to be a balance in every story. There's a light side and a dark side, a yin and a yang, and a PewDiePie and a T-series. And in this case, Amazon maintains their success by being good but by being extremely relentless at the same time. Let me explain. The higher a monkey climbs, the more you see of its ugly side, right? That's why in 2014, the International Trade Union Confederation, or ITAC, voted Jeff Bezos, that's how you pronounce it, as the worst boss ever. And in 2018, he was nominated again. So why do people think that Bezos is such a bad boss? The answer is simple. It's because he's absolutely relentless. Here are a few examples. Amazon has relentless, unrealistic work expectations. Here are a few of them. A lot of workers receive emails past midnight and during holidays, and they're expected to respond instantly. And if you don't respond instantly, you get demerits. And enough demerits, and you get kicked out of the company. Then, there's also parents who work at Amazon and they complain that their bosses pressure them into spending less time with their families. Also, a lot of females working at Amazon are denied promotions because they have children and Amazon doesn't believe that females can manage having a family life and a professional life and balance them evenly. Amazon warehouses also have this crazy thing called location timing and what it does is it times how long a worker takes to fetch a product off of a shelf and it compares it against the time they should take. So if you take any longer than the computer thinks you should, you get demerits. And the crazy thing is each Amazon warehouse is the size of eight football fields. So if you take long or you're not in good shape, you're out the door. In fact, some employees are so scared of not meeting this time limit that they've been known to urinate in bottles instead of taking bathroom breaks because they don't want to get fired. And finally, in 2011, in Pennsylvania, it was 37 degrees outside, and Amazon workers were working in warehouses, and Amazon hadn't installed any air conditioners. So instead of doing the logical thing and installing an air conditioner in a factory or a warehouse where people work, they chose to pay paramedics to wait on standby outside the warehouse so that if anybody collapsed, they could take them to the hospital. That was the only help the employees got on that day. Amazon is also known for its cruel, relentless treatment. Bezos expects employees to ignore the feelings of others and provide blunt feedback 
so that his company can grow and be even bigger than it already is. So if you think that somebody has a bad idea, you don't need to beat around the bush. You just tell it to them outright. And that's how their company culture works. And it's really bad because it discourages harmony in the workplace and you end up with a lot of unhappy people. Furthermore, a woman with breast cancer was once told that she was in danger of losing her job due to difficulties in her personal life. That's pretty harsh. And a woman who had miscarried was forced to go on a business trip for Amazon one day after her surgery. Amazon even has this crazy feedback system in which one employee can throw another employee under the bus to his manager in order to promote competition or growth. That's heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? What? And here's one that really rang with me. A top-level Amazon executive said, Nearly every person I worked with, I saw crying at their desk. Lastly, Amazon is known for exploiting loopholes. For the last 20-something years they've been around, because they see themselves as an e-commerce company, they've managed to avoid millions of dollars in taxes, which could have been used for the good of the general public. Another thing that they do is they hire their employees through third-party organizations, which means that their employees count as independent contractors. And that means that these workers don't belong to a trade union. So even if they have any complaints about HR violations, they don't really have anyone they can go to. In fact, it's so bad that low-level workers at Amazon sign a confidentiality agreement so that when they leave the company, when they inevitably get fired, they don't talk to anyone about how bad the working conditions are at Amazon. So we can see that Amazon is not an innocent company. They've done deep, dark, demeaning things to get to where they need to be. And today, they are the biggest online retailer of all time. In the end, this video isn't going to convince people to stop buying from Amazon.com, and it's not going to convince Amazon into adopting more humane working conditions. But I do hope that it sparks a conversation that we need to have globally. And that is, as we move towards a world where AI becomes more and more dominant, the most valuable assets we have will be the humans we hire. And so we need to treat them like humans. And we treat people like humans, not by being relentless, but rather by cultivating a culture of kindness. Kindness. Respecting and helping others without waiting for anything in return.